they might you might hear tidbits of things about them through other people like oh he was just in the hospital you know he had this or this happened he his car was broken into did you hear that don't fall for it those are all part of the games those are all part of the games they love using people to get to you a hundred percent um they send snapchats yeah block block on social media as well so when you if you're going no contact the first thing that i recommend is to block them okay block their number block delete if you can i know it's not possible i couldn't delete my ex but i blocked him um don't creep on their social media as well because they will triangulate through social media they know if you are the type of person who is inclined to watch them and check on them check if they have a new girlfriend or boyfriend check if they are spending money somewhere they could be spending on your family check on these things like maybe you're checking not because you romantically miss them, but maybe you just check in. They will triangulate in their social media. They will make sure that they put shit out there to make you feel something. So don't look. Just don't look. Don't um, block them on everything. Block their family members. Yes. Like just and and most of their family members, if they have a good head on their shoulder, shoulders, they'll they'll understand why you're not participating in that, and they'll understand like, hey, they had a breakup. She doesn't want to see me, or he doesn't want to see see this. People who get mad are just mad because the narcissist told them to, to be mad and told them to check on it. So block everybody who's going to contact everybody. you from It's them. not easy. It's really not easy. And this is, this is why those feelings, when I said think about what it feels like to never speak to them again, whatever feelings, like, I mean, Carly and I are like, heck yeah, let's go, right? We love it. But I know there's some of you out there that are probably feeling a lot of mixed emotions and the reason that is one of the reasons why this is so hard to do it's hard to do this it is it is hard to leave a narc for sure to to cut them out of your life but the another part that's hard is to cut out their family members and friends because you like some of them and it sucks it really does yeah and they're they just they can never begin to understand what it is you're going through and some of them even though some of them have good intentions you might hear this you might hear them say well it's just one conversation it's not going to be that bad like is it really that bad like do you have to really cut them out like it's just a birthday party you know he'll be in the corner there like just come and these are the things that they don't realize there's people in your life that are just not going to realize what you're going through no one's really going to understand it unless they've been in it so yeah you do have to say goodbye to those people and you know sometimes friendships are a season sometimes they're just not meant to and I think you had a video about this right like sometimes it's okay to just let people go and in this situation when you're you're doing this remember when we go no contact we're doing it for a reason this is an act of self-love this is you choosing you for once because you've always chose them you've always done everything for them you've always fall and succumb to all of their manipulation and all their tactics and you've been felt left confused you've been felt leaving like left depressed sad anxious all of that stuff and and they feel more powerful because you're controlled by them when you go no contact and you cut these ties you are making your very first act of self-love why because your self is the most important thing especially if you have kids especially if you have anyone in your life you have to put yourself above it and you have to protect your peace They are trying to have access to destroy your soul. So if you think about it that way, removing their friends and family and anyone connected to the narcissist means that you are doing that to protect your peace at all costs, even though it sucks to do that to those people. And you have to even tell your own friends because they're going to be so, they'll want to talk about it in ways where like, oh, he's so stupid or she's so stupid. Look at what she did. And it's like, I blocked the narcissists on social media and all these platforms because I don't want to know. So you have to sit your friends down and kind of be like, I'll, I'll, there's going to be a day where I will want to hear this and think this is so funny and look back on this. And there'll be a day when I maybe can receive this stuff, but it's not now. I no. don't want to know about them. I've had to look friends in the eyes and be like, I don't want to know about them at all. So if you continue telling me about them, I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. Point blank. And those friends, once I put it that way, were fine. But you have to have a hard conversation with some of them. You do. You and have to. It sucks to it, talk to your own yeah. friends like that. Because they want to tell you all kinds of dumb stuff that they're doing. It's hard for them. It's hard for them to understand it. Because, 
you know, your friends want to help, want you to be happy. And when you, when they see you like this, they, they don't understand that, that just telling me that he's got this nasty girlfriend that he's spending $600 Chanel lipsticks for isn't helping me. It doesn't make me feel a certain way. Right. But they think like, Oh, I got this dirt. I'm going to tell them. And they think they're helping you. But if you say it like that, exactly like that, just point blank, this is what I need from you. The good, your friends, the the ones you want to have stick around will understand and we'll put an end to it that day. Yes. And they'll respect you and they'll want to protect you. So, I mean, it might take being vulnerable and your friends might see you cry and that's okay. They might, you might have to look them in the eyes and be like, I'm hurting. And you telling me about this Chanel lipsticks is making me crazy. It's like them contacting me. It really is like finding out anything that they're doing is just, is just like you watching their feed. It's, it's like your friends triangulating you at this point. You don't need friend flying monkeys. No, especially when they're doing it blindly. Like, yes. Like, you have to inform your friends because they don't get it. It's okay not to be polite. It's okay to tell people why you're doing it. And if you need a blanket, like a blanket answer to, well, why you just have to cut them off like that? Because my mental health is at risk and I'm triggered by any thought of him. That's all you have to say. I don't want to think about that person that abused me for years. I don't want to think about them. And, yeah, I, and these are people who could go on abusing you in front of people and, and nobody would catch on. They, they didn't catch on to the subtle jokes and the subtle jabs and the, I mean, some people couldn't see the abuse that was happening right in front of them. And it's, it's sad and it's scary now. And I'm sure that you can see this now that when your eyes become awakened to this kind of stuff, you can see some people who are, who you might consider dear to you in these relationships right in front of you. And it's so, and you can't do anything yeah. about it, right? No, you can't. You can't. Cause you're not going to convince them and they'll come to you when, when they realize it, but you can see just the inner workings of the beginning of a relationship. And it is so triggering sometimes. It is. It's like a light switch turns on. It's like, you know, one day it's like you're living like okay i don't know what the heck's going on we're okay and then you come out of it and then you're healed and then all of a sudden it's like boom i'm with a narcissist and i can see them everywhere i can see them everywhere it's and really it's, scary it's scary when that light turns on it's you it's, it's you, like, you. no it's yeah, yeah it's like ignorance can be bliss sometimes right but then what happens and i've talked to this with narc hunter before remember where i was like oh i wish i would have known all this stuff before well you know it when you know it but Remember, there are people who are in relationships who die with that person, never knowing they were abused. That is so true. Or people, the the most common thing is they don't hit me. It's not abuse. And I can tell you all of the mental abuse. I have been mentally and physically abused. And I can tell you every bit of mental abuse, in my opinion, for myself, was far worse than any hit that I endured. Mm-hmm. any choke, any, anything that I endured all the mental abuse, the gaslighting, um, just jabs at like the foundation of who I was. It was worse than any hand on me. Let me and put it this way. Me. If someone were to physically assault you at a bar, at a mall, you were attacked by a, a predator, a, an attacker, a stranger. Okay. That person were to physically attack you. That's traumatic, right? Obviously, that's very traumatic. He's a stranger. You end up in the hospital, okay? You get all, you you know, everything is, is, takes some time to heal. Your body heals. The bruising heals. And you do get bouts of, like, every time you get into a parking lot, maybe you get scared. You get scared, right? Maybe, maybe that's what happens. Anytime anyone comes near you or you hear a loud bang, that's an attack. Now, think about that one event, Okay, that's one event and that's physical and the bruise is healed. Think about all of the events that lead up to like, you know, intimate terrorism, domestic violence, all the little events that cut at you mentally and your cortisol level spiking at every time, like in being in fight or flight and being scared and being and never being able to identify and describe it. I can describe and say I was attacked in a parking lot from an abuser with a mask and I was ended up in the hospital with a broken rib and a bruised here and then a broken jaw and all of this. I can describe that. And that's, that's, that is a definite sign of abuse. How do you describe gaslighting? 
how it's you a, describe manipulation. The best way that I can talk about how narcissists come and creep in and like kind of, it's like they prep you. It's like they micro dose you at first and then they Grooming. start yeah. on thicker. But it's a slow, insidious, and almost imperceptible change. The abuse is so slow that you don't see it by the time you're engulfed in it. It's that gradual. It's like first they did this and they got away with it. Then they amped it up a little bit. Then they amped it up a little bit. It's like the frog in boiling water type deal. If you throw yeah. the frog in boiling water. You don't water. know. You have no idea that that if you're sitting in a hot bath, a warm bath, and it slowly gets hotter and hotter and hotter, you have no idea you're going to you're gonna burn to death in that bath. You just sit in it because you don't mm -hmm. see that it, the temperature is rising. You have no idea. 